Hello and welcome to Car Dealer Live. My name is James Batchelor and it's that time of the month again where we look at used car values. Joining me as ever to speak more about what's been happening in the market is Cap HPI's Director of Valuations, Darren Martin. Hello, Darren. Hi, James. How are you? Very good, thank you. Always, always lovely to have you on. Um, let's just get stuck into it then. So what did values do this month then? I mean, were they up, were they down, or were they level like they were in January? It's been quite mixed actually in, in February. The month started off um, following on from January, which got a little bit better as the month went on. So it got a little bit stronger. That carried on into the first week or so of February. But then it, it's kind of turned a little bit, especially at that three year point and younger, and values are ending up at 0.3% down at um, three years and similar at, uh, at one year as well. So um, a small movement down at three years, that's less than a hundred pounds. Um, and, but it did turn during the month. But what we are definitely seeing is that older cars are a lot stronger and have gone up in value. So at the 10 year point, they've gone up by 2.6%. So there's some definite strength at that cheaper end. And, and we've broken that down by, by value band as well. And you can definitely see Cars under around 10 or 12,000 pounds going up in value. Under 5,000 pounds, they've gone up by three, three and a half percent. So that's kind of the, the, the biggest strength area. Um, that middle ground, sort of 15, 20 grand plus, um, that's been more difficult. Those are some of those cars look quite expensive for their age and mileage now. So they've come down um, slightly, not dramatically, but slightly. And, and then you've got the real top end, which is sort of 50 grand plus, plus and that's pretty level slightly up. Mm. And I guess we sort of think of that as that middle ground, it, that, as I say, they look expensive for what they are. At the cheaper end, and um, that's maybe a necessity purchase, um, or you're being a little bit prudent, cost of living concerns, things like that. So you're going a little bit cheaper. Also, if you're a dealer, you can, you're making good margins on a seven grand car. Maybe you buy two seven grand cars rather than one 15 grand car and, and make more money on them and and, and that sort of uh, thing going on. And at the top end, that, I think those cars are staying strong because it's still an aspirational purchase and you're not that bothered about um, the cost of living particularly yeah. and what, what the future holds. Yeah, I mean, it always is. I mean, we've seen it in quite a few months, haven't we, where it's the, it's the middle ground that does seem to be more at pressure than the two other ends of, of, of the spectrum. I suppose some of it is down to the fact that people feel as though they don't have to get rid of their car, whereas at the lower end, people, it's a necessity purchase, like you said, and at the top end is people thinking, well, you know, uh, the cost of living crisis isn't affecting me. I'm still going to go out and enjoy myself. It's the middle ground is always a, a pre on pressure, isn't it? Yeah, and you don't get as much for your money now, obviously, with the, with the prices going up so much. You, you're looking at a fairly standard vehicle at three years old that's now in the late teens um, to buy. That's that, that's um, quite a, a, an eye-opener for some, although obviously their car has gone up in value, but the car they're buying going up in value to that sort of degree is, um, yeah, so it's a, it's a bit eye-watering, and, and we've seen some drops in that sort of area of some sort of fairly um, normal cars like uh, like Mocha 3008, Sportage. There's, there's a few of them around um, and they do look a little bit expensive after what's happened over the last year or so. So, so they've been affected in, on price, yeah. Yeah. At, at that cheaper end of the market, are we still seeing the cars that are rising the most or, or selling the, the, the quickest? Are the the rational, the practical cars like MPVs and estate cars and, and in particular diesels? Yeah, well, di diesel and petrol have, have been similarly affected this month. They've both done, have moved in, in very similar fashion. We're still seeing a lot of diesel cars in the in the data that we receive. Um, the cars that are being sold are still almost, almost well, sort of forty percent of the cars we see are still diesel. Obviously, because it's like they're older ages. It's only only the, the younger ones that are uh, the, the sort of the, the move to alternatively fueled vehicles. But yeah, MPVs have done okay again. They've actually gone up slightly again. Um, overall, there's lots of moving parts within this, as always, some some up, some down. Um, that year has actually had a good month. Um, again, you talk about those sort of cheaper price price point cars. So yeah, that 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 bottom end. And if you if you've got an older car that's got full service history in good condition, um, then those cars are selling really well because they're really really sought after. You get to get a nice cheaper car, stick it on your forecourt, and it probably sells very very quickly. Yeah. I mean, you mentioned Dacia, they're doing quite well. I mean, are there any brands where, where values have, have dropped a bit? 
Um, we've seen a little bit of pressure, and, and it's generally where um, where you've got new car supply that has come through, and that has generated some part exchanges of, of that brand as well. And then we've seen some weakness. Um, it's come down by more than the average. A couple of brands, Mini has come down by more than the average. Tesla has actually come down by more than the average. And they're, they're cars that, yeah, there's a bit more, there has been more plentiful new car supply. So that could be for some reasons for that. And that could be a point to what happens for the rest of the year with other brands as cars come through, part exchanges appear and the franchise dealers are, are sort of have more to choose from that you could get a little bit of a drop, but it's not a crash or anything like that. It's, uh, it, it, it's just sort of, more than the average uh, and we've just seen a bit of pressure on price of those brands that's probably something we're going to be seeing um, at various points this year isn't it where manufacturers different manufacturers get better supply of, of key components and they're able to to actually get a, a large number of cars out into the market yeah and, and the models that, that come through you, you're still sort of hearing of a, of a so a manufacturer that's got six or seven different models and maybe only two of them are, are on shorter lead time so they're focusing on those get those ones coming through um and some of their, their other cars are still on on long lead time so it's it's really really mixed and um yeah it'll be it's going to be a fascinating few months really with regards to new car supply and then what that generates for, for used car supply a lot of dealers have got their eye on march now with uh, and hoping that generates a lot of used cars for them with new cars coming through. Yeah, it must be quite a, a stressful time at uh, car manufacturers, at head offices, because various cars are going off sale all the time, aren't they? Saw, we saw it this week with VW and their ID3. They're only selling one particular trim level. And it's just like, well, they're obviously able to get um, a larger supply of those particular cars. So it's 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 a strange time really isn't it where yeah. various cars are going on sale and off sale all of the time yeah it's it's really it, it, it must be really difficult for a retail to manage that and then they're, they're kind of having to manage the message with the customer about lead times and then cars seem to suddenly appear um when they weren't necessarily expecting them some cars come through without the full content they're expecting so we hear of like heated seats not being on cars and maybe a manual handbrake rather than an electric one they weren't expecting it and they're they're having to explain that to the customer so there's some yes yeah, so there's a, a few challenges going on definitely um when we were talking at the back end of last year we were we were talking about the fact that a lot of dealers were stocking up and a lot of their forecourts were pretty full are you hearing that starting to change a little bit now? I mean, are you seeing sort of stock levels dropping in terms of used cars? Yeah, we obviously speak to a lot of dealers and through the month, and the, the general theme is that sales are okay. It's just sort of ticking along, really. Mm -hmm. um, those are some of, some of the quotes we've had. We have to say it's about seven out of ten uh, by by way of things, and, and it's so it's just about okay. So cars aren't flying off the shelves. And because of that, they're not going out and buying in bulk to replace them. They're kind of just picking off um, cars that when maybe maybe replacing a sold unit. They're certainly not sort of over overstocking themselves at the moment. And there are retailers that are still carrying cars in stock from sort of September, October when they bought them at their peak, and they're reluctant to reduce them in price because they paid a lot of money for them. That was when they were they were very high after um, before some drops in the, at the back end of the year. So. Yeah, I wouldn't say um, the, the, it's, it's quite dependent, actually. There are smaller independents that are probably looking more for stock, but they have been able to buy as well because the, the big guys aren't about buying in bulk. Mm. So it's quite mixed out there, but they are um, certainly there's some reductions happening on price, but it's not across the board. It's more um, selective and it's probably more normal behaviour than it, than it has been. And they're having to work a little bit harder for the sales. Maybe they're negotiating on price, which last summer over those uh, those months where values were going up, they didn't have to do that. So there's a little bit more negotiation going on and having to work a little bit harder to sell the cars that they've got in stock. Yeah, yeah. We can't not talk about electric cars. I mean, are they sort of still ticking along quite steadily or is there anything that you've, you've noticed? Yeah, electric cars have, have done OK. Um, not pulled up any trees, really. They're, they're OK. And where, where there's... Um, uh, where there's new car supply, they do seem to be um, that seem to be the value seems to be more heavily um, affected, as I say, but like Tesla, Nissan Leaf as well. Whereas where you can't get one, um, values are quite strong. So I, I guess it, it it makes perfect sense for that. So we've seen it quite mixed again, with with some going up and some going down, and it is dependent a little bit on that um, on that new car supply 
uh, and, and all of those sorts of things. But certainly consideration for electric vehicles is, is, is higher than it's ever been and, and will continue to increase. Um, how how would you describe that that tiny little drop, even just just in terms of a, you know a hundred less than a hundred pounds? I mean, is it is it is it something you expected, or is it a bit of a surprise, or how would you describe it? Um, I, th I think it's probably a little bit weaker than I expected it to be. I, I thought it might be level or, or maybe a small a small improvement, but it's uh, the fact that it's dropped at three years is probably a little bit surprising. But the, then you've got the older cars that have gone up in value, and Something yeah. that has driven that three-year-old point is SUVs. SUVs have been a little bit weaker, certainly where there's plentiful volume. Those cars I mentioned earlier, where, there, where there's volume there, um, that has driven down some of the prices. And, and others, sort of more aspirational ones like Q8, um, that they've, they've done okay. So yeah, Q8, X6, G-Class, they're more niche. They, they've done okay. So it's it's quite mixed. I would say overall, I've... I, I, I'm not massively surprised. We thought it would be level-ish, but the fact that it's slightly down is probably more of a surprise than if it had been slightly up, just because supply levels are still relatively low out there. We're still about 25% lower on our trade volumes with the data that we received than we were pre-COVID at, at this time of year. But it's ahead of where it was this time last year. But last year we were in a lockdown. So it's um yeah, it's sort of in the middle of those of those two metrics. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, you mentioned G class there, but it's 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 cars like that and the Q8. You know, they're not really going to be affected too badly, are they? Because they are those kinds of purchases where people people want them, they go and buy them. They're not yeah, going to exactly. around, are they? Yeah, yeah, there's not loads of them around. So yeah, you, you you've got the money for those, and and there's not loads and loads of stock. And it's all about supply and demand with, with the used car market. So yeah. that's keep keeping that strong. But it's where it's where that volume is. And where the prices are high, they've gone up by, by such high amounts over the last year that there's a little bit of pressure. Yeah. Um, let's just look ahead to next month. And I know it's slightly difficult because, you know, we've got plate change and all, all of those factors. But um, what, what, do, what do you think? Are we going to be looking at a bit of a rise, do you think? It's all down to new car supply. And at the moment, it's really, really difficult to get a handle on that. Um, we've heard of some brands that are saying not might be a sort of 70 percent of normal some brands 50 percent of normal and so that will generate some part exchanges so there will be more stock coming through in march that that tends to happen anyway maybe it won't be as 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 high as normal but there will be more cars available and because of that i think there could be um, a small drop again next month but it depends when those new cars come through and it might actually be quite stable in March. If the new cars come through towards the end of the month, then you might be looking at April before there's any weakness. And Easter does always tend to be a bit of a watershed. You've got the holiday period, weather improves, you've got more stock coming through. So you've got demand going down as you hit that period and supplies going up. That can be a bit of a, a turning point for when values start to drop. So you might be okay for March, I think older cars will continue to be strong, cheaper cars will continue to be strong, but there might be some continued weakness in that middle ground, but not, not huge. No. Fantastic. I mean, fantastic insight as ever, Darren. Thank you so much for joining us today. That's a pleasure. Well, that's it for today's Car Dealer Live. Join us again very soon. Bye-bye.